Across the developing world, the problem of improving the well-being of smallholder farmers by linking them more closely with their markets remains a very significant challenge. For many decades, this problem has been tackled by focusing mainly on productivity improvements at the farm level. But a new perspective is emerging, and it is different in two ways. Firstly, it sees smallholder farmers as part of a bigger system that extends from the farm, sometimes through many stages, to the final consumer. Because this system has a number of linkages, we call it a chain. Secondly, we recognise that when a consumer purchases the product of that chain, value is created, both in the form of money and in the form of information. We refer to this as a focus on value, and combining these two perspectives gives us the concept of a value chain. Applying value chain thinking to improving the livelihoods of farmers means firstly focusing on what the farmer produces through the lens of consumer value, and secondly examining how the chain creates, distributes and shares that value. This video demonstrates value chain thinking in action. This Ghanaian value chain was chosen because of two things. First, Ghana is the second largest country that consumes fresh tomato. And out of the volumes in terms of consumption, only 30% is locally produced, which means 70% is imported. And this provides an opportunity for such a chain to be improved. Secondly, we have issues of post harvest losses, which is about 30 to 40 percent. When there are improvements in the Ghanaian fresh tomato value chain, it can really, really help farmers to generate more income for their sustenance. This study was carried out to now identify the various challenges that exist in the fresh tomato value chain so as to provide holistic solutions that can be implemented across the entire value chain. So what I did was identify the main actors in a chain. We have the input dealers, we have the producers, we have the wholesalers, we have the retailers, and then we have the final consumer. I conducted focus group discussions and interviews for the actors that I've already mentioned. My major concern with fresh tomato supply is the packaging and the preservation. Because when you go to the market, you see most of these tomatoes are getting spoiled because of the way they are packaged. They are just kept in a back, uh, basket somewhere in the corner. I'm because of the environment. Then customers. So we start here a phone, a chakra. So we go so kakra kakra. We do a tomatoes. Any Tomato and Sudia would see why, or to me, Yanifi, and to send you over the Mauvia and send the Bamaumsa. So we had some of the recommendations being short term, which we can do now, some of them being in the medium term, which we can 
do not too long and for some that are in the long term and require a lot of resources that we can do later. Understanding the market in relation to consumer behavior was a key in ensuring that improvements can really be made based on the input from the consumer's perspective. Everyone in the chain needs to understand the market because input dealers will need to know the type of seeds they should sell. Producers will need to know what to grow and how to grow it. Wholesalers, retailers will also need to know the packaging needs of those products, transport, storage, and preservation, all needed to ensure that they provide value or they add value to the product for the consumer. I decided to move from the consumer rather back to the input dealers because I saw the need to inculcate the needs of the consumers as a feedback to make decisions with regards to inputs, with regards to production. So consumers were the first actors in the chain that I carried out the focus group discussions and also the interviews. Retailers will also want to sell more Ghanaian fresh tomatoes. Yes, we've been in uh, the produce business for 20 years now. And it just so happens that uh, tomatoes is one of the crops that we struggle with year in, year out. The mindset of most of our farmers, it's difficult to change their mindset to the fact that you can farm all year round. We have difficulties where there's even, even with irrigation, they will still stick to their three seasons a year because it's been handed down through generations after generations. Farming generally in Ghana is seasonal. It's most dependent on the rains. So it is during the rainy season that all farmers, smallholder farmers engage in a kind of productive activity. Farmers cannot afford irrigation facilities, which could have helped them to be able to produce even during the dry season by not relying on the rain. But those facilities and equipments are really expensive. There is no standard packaging for fresh tomatoes in Ghana, from the farm gates to the markets. And obviously about 30 to 40 percent of them become soft and the result is that within a shortest time it begins to deteriorate another issue is the fact that farmers don't really get the needed market information which will inform their decisions with regards to production because they don't get enough information along the chain what they finally produce do not meet the needs of customers. The analysis made generated a number of maps. The maps highlight the various activities that each of the actors carry out. For example, if you talk about the smallholder farmers as producers, it lists all the activities that they carry out from the land preparation, the nursery, the transplanting, the cultural practices that they engage in until the produce is ready. Now there was an assessment of sex activities to really find out which of these activities add value to the consumer in terms of his or her preference, which of the activities that really create waste within the chain. Then two of the maps also highlight the flow of information that exists among the actors. 
apart from the flow of information, it also assesses the relationship that exists among the actors. Now, based on the weaknesses, recommendations were given, and then an action plan is developed. Improvements included introducing the use of plastic crates so as to ensure that the produce are packaged well. Then there was also a recommendation on piloting innovative technologies that can help increase production, such as the use of the greenhouse or irrigation systems, such as the sprinkler or the drip system by smallholder farmers to help them increase production since they will be able to produce almost throughout the year. Trials of new varieties that are resistant to various pests and diseases and also conducive to various geographical locations were also recommended so that we could come out with varieties that meet the needs of the consumers as well as those of the farmers who are doing the production. Among the lessons learned was the need to have a collaborative mindset among the actors. That was a real challenge for most of the farmers as well as other actors. Applying the value chain approach is not automatic. You will get resistance from members who might not be in agreement with it because they don't see the need or they are not comfortable with working together with other members within the chain where they have to be transparent, where they have to share information and where they have to share profits or resources equitably. This was something that is difficult for most of them to do. But relationships with actors along the chain is very, very important. Trust must be built over time. And when that is done, it helps to build the effectiveness of the chain as information is shared openly. On the whole, I would say that it has been a very exciting journey. Most of the participants are beginning to see the need to work collaboratively. Understanding consumers' preference is the key to the whole of the success of this chain because their preference is what really is embedded in all the activities of the actors. I think the future is bright, but it all rests on us.